Shir Kali, Parshas Yishlam. Chapter 11, 
it right at the end, in the chapter just before, the one we're going to deal with, uh, then Yav um, Yavino turns to his two sons, Shimon and Levi, Yomer Yaakov El Shimon Vel Levi, Achartem Oisi, you've made me ugly, you've made me, uh, you know, uh, despised in the eyes of all his Goyim, the Havi Shaini Beyeshev Horus, to make me literally to, how do you call it, um, um, make my re- reputation smell very badly, the Havi Shaini, yeah, to uh, cause my uh, name uh, to literally not be of a good odor, as you might say, the Havi Shaini Beyeshev Horus, Vachnani of a what they were the, the people uh, in that particular part of Eretz as well, the Knani, the Prizi. And he was saying, Miss Poor, and I'm only just a few people, and saying, Miss Poor, a small number of people. The Ness who are lying, and they all gather around on me, the Hikuni, and they'll beat me, they'll smite me militarily, the Nishmatati, and he'll basically, and I'll be destroyed, wiped out. But, um, you know, my, um, both me and my, I'm my whole household. So Yang uh, uh, is deeply concerned by the uh, diplomatic or political upshot of this whole action taken by his, uh, his sons in general, and particularly uh, Levi uh, Shimon. And to a certain extent, Yang Vino could never really uh, forget their, what he felt was their over, what you might call, action to the whole situation. But we see right at the end of the Sefer Bereshit, when Yang Kavino gives blessings to his sons, then he writes over there by Levi Vashim, and he still remembers <laughs> the thing that they did, uh, with Shem, but that's this uh, thing here, in a negative way, without going into all the details. Uh, over there, which means that there must have been some uh, or difference of opinion between Yaakov and his sons uh, as to this whole city of Shem, what was, uh, what sort of reaction was due to it, uh, and what, and what maybe uh, not. However, with, uh, whatever that may imply, which we may mention that briefly in a second, uh, the Bnei Yaakov didn't ask anybody. They didn't. They didn't take any advice from Yaakov Avinu. They didn't hesitate, and they wiped out the whole city. I mean, completely. So um, Yaakov Avinu expresses his uh, concern, and, for, and so they answered him by Yemru, Hachazina Yase Safisino. Are these people going to make? Our daughter, our sister, like a, um, a, a harlot, you know, like somebody, they're going to treat her improperly uh, in such a way. And that's all they answered him. And then everything seems to stop for a moment. And then it's written by Yema, El Ikim, El Yankov, Kum Alei Beis El. Go up into Earth to swell, to the place called Beis Kael. The chef shaman even paused there for a while. They say, Shom is Beach, and you must make the altar, Lokel, Hanira, Elecha, to the uh, Abish, or to, to the Abish to you, that, that, that appeared to you when you were fleeing at the beginning, uh, 20 years ago, or more than 20 years ago now, from Esau of Shicha. And therefore, Yankov you know, tells all the people who are with him, yeah, that he says, Vosiru Eselokei Hanecha, take away the that any uh, uh, idols or false gods or whatever that you might have with you and purify yourselves and uh, change your garments then Okuma will go up to basically like the Ebster folders and then they all give uh, all of these things uh, so what are they doing with all these uh, uh, false uh, gods and idols and things in their entourage so right tells us that they took them in the spoil from Shechem, that when they conquered so massively the whole Shechem, then they slept everything out of Shechem. Was that it was likely that they, they slept with them a lot of uh, uh, idols and uh, other things that were laying around, and uh, they didn't really mean to keep them, to serve them, God forbid, but they were yeah, amongst all the, yeah, the, what you might call the spoil of the war, and therefore 
he commanded to get rid of them. But that's interesting why at this particular point did he say that. However, uh, we'll mention that briefly also, God willing, by Amshah Chayyon. And then, uh, after they gave everything, then Yanku buried them under the, a big tree, under an Elo uh, tree, Rashi says an Elo is a type of tree, Asher Im Shechem. And that's also a very interesting question. If you find a Veda Zorah and you want to get rid of it, then uh, the law in uh, the Gemara and in, even in Shulchan I and in the Rambam, is that you have to either uh, break it into such small pieces that it will blow away with the wind and cast it into the wind, or you have to throw it into the sea, or maybe into a very strong river. But burying doesn't help by a Veda Zorah. And yet, nonetheless, we see that Garakim told them to bury it under the tree. So that also arouses a big uh, discussion amongst the great Mephorshim. Uh, what's the purpose of burying it under the tree if it doesn't help by Veda Zorah to bury it? So some people say that maybe it already lost the dinner of Veda Zorah because all the people who were conquered, uh, the males were all killed, but there was the men, uh, I'm sorry, the women and the children were left is maybe the women, when they saw the uh, power of the Bnei Yankiv, that they sort of uh, refused, they um, were mavatl their Aveda Zorah. And if the Goy is mavatil, his own Aveda Zorah, then it becomes spotted. It's no longer got all the dinim of Aveda Zorah. A Goy can be mavatil, his own Aveda Zorah. But a, a Jew can't be mavatl the Aveda Zorah of a Goy. If a guy has served something of it as well, you can't uh, come along and what we call it, uh, nullify it. So, uh, <clears throat> therefore, some people say that the reason he could bury it, that it wasn't already emissary. I think mean, that's one suggestion uh, that's made. Others say he was just in such a hurry uh, to keep moving that he had no time to do all the normal allotments, that therefore at least he buried it. And uh, why was he in a hurry? Because uh, Rashi tells us, but the Abishta was already upset with Yankiv that he'd taken so long to be going home. And ever when he said to him, come and go up to base Kale, and then Rashi said, why did the Abishta tell him to get moving? You know, come on, stand up and go to base Kale. So Rashi says, Lafisha ichatu padera. You should be taking too long, you've been schlepping too long to get home, haven't you? Eh? Yeah. So I mean, that may be a very sick movie since you have in front of you, but got to keep, uh, got to keep, uh, you know, uh, with what we're talking about. Is um, So Rashi says that you've been taking too long to get home. Now I don't really see anywhere where Yaku dragged around. I mean, he, he seems to be moving very uh, uh, as much as fast as he can as systematically as he can. Nonetheless, the Abish said you've been taking too long, and therefore, Nashto, you've been punished with this whole thing that happened with Dina, which your, your daughter got uh, involved with the Goya Mishchem, but that was a punishment because you, you've been taking too long to go on. So therefore, young Ravina was in a hurry. He was anxious to, to carry out what Hashem wanted of him, and therefore he buried, buried the Aveda Zorah, according to some people. But, what was the big, uh, you know, what was the big hurry? I mean, Yang uh, Vinu Lachera, we don't really see that he just hang around anywhere. This whole thing that happened with Shem wasn't something that he deliberately got himself involved in. Uh, but nonetheless, it did delay his progress. So it seems that this whole thing that happened uh, in Shem is a form of a punishment, a, a, a form of a a divine decree against the Ankara in that regard. So maybe we'll have to examine that also. We've already got numerous factors so we've got to take a, a, a glance at. However, what is of central importance is that they get a, ready, they give all their, um, the way to start the things that they had. Yanku buries them under the tree and then it's written by his soul and they went, they went on their journey towards Eretz Yisrael, towards Beis Kem, which is already inside Eretz Yisrael. Well, it's further into Eretz Yisrael, because Shem is already Lamaisa inside Eretz Yisrael. Vayisau, vayhi chitas 
Elikim al ve'orim asher svivisayim. They began to travel, and contrary to what Yaakov Avinu had been concerned about, there fell a, um, a fear, literally a fear of God, on all the cities all around them. And they didn't, contrary to what Yaakov Avinu was so worried about, they didn't run after him or chase him or flee, or adequate, um, uh, what's the expression? They didn't chase after him. Uh, but they stayed in their place, and all of them were filled with a certain divine fear. Kitash elokim al heorim asher svivay seher. V'leirodfu, and they didn't chase acharei b'nei yankoi. They didn't flee after the, or chase after them. It comes along Rashi, Rashi says, what is chitas? What does that mean? The word chitas. Rashi says, Pacha. Pacha. That's all. In other words, that there was a Pacha of, of the Abish that fell on these people. And that's called Chita. So the, uh, the word Chitas is a genitive, the, the fear of something. Pacha of the Abish. So the real the real word would be Chita with a Tach, not with a Tess. It's Chita with a Tess is we. But Chita with a Tach. But since it's connected to the word Elohim, then it's written Chitas. Chitas Elohim. Alaorim Asher Svivisei. So when that comes out, did nothing happen? Absolutely nothing happened. Uh, here's a Yidin that uh, moved into a big city like Shem, and there was something not so pleasant. Yang Yuvinu, uh, I take it you're writing down the shield, is, is that the idea? Good. It said Yang Yuvinu. Uh, he moves into Shechem and his sons cause this massive destruction of the whole city. I mean, Shechem in those days was a center. It was, a, it was like a central uh, uh, town. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many people there were, but it was a big, it was a big center in those days. And it just wiped the whole thing out. I mean, completely burned it all down. Go with all the people in the captivity, kill off all the males. And it's a massive, uh, you know, reaction and a tremendous... Uh, 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 act, act against a whole city and all the people so around just uh, kept quiet, nothing nothing happened and the young people and all his sons just moved out of the country further towards Base Kale and then when they get to Base Kale they offer up a, a, a Kopanes and but I answer I answer Arias so uh, all of you have already noticed uh, that that word chitas, <laughs> but the word chitas uh, is a Russian tavis for chitas, <laughs> and chitas makes the uh, the three words kumish, tehillim, tanya. As um, if you learn chitas, then you cause chitas elikim al ha'orim. Spoke about it many many times. That one of the, the great uh, inyanim of learning chitas and being reductive in chitas, and particularly in the base Knesses when the, it finishes the time for davening, and then there's a time that the Friedrich Rebbe begged everybody to say some tehillim. Do you know what they'll say? Oh, I've got no time to say to them. I've got to get to the kitchen. I've got to go here. I've got to go there. But you stay in the minion and you say, Tehillim. You know what I mean? Tehillim. And the last tough is Tanya. You know, we're now between Yud Kislev and Yud Tes Kislev. We're heading towards uh, the, the day of the great revelation of, uh, of Tanya, Yud Tes Kislev. Ches is, is Chumat. So we see that if the Rebbe, the Rebbe said on many occasions, you keep Chitas. Then you cause chitas, the word chita means fear or pacha. Then you cause the fear of the Abishta. You bring the fear of the Abishta on all the going all around. Wherever you happen to be, all the going. <laughs> I was once by the river, I heard a seizure with the river. On Silva's Torah, the river used to always mention chitas. He always used to urge people to be metactic in, in learning chitas. I heard a whole view from the river, but I get to. Uh, 
Now, when a person learns chitas, even if one person in his particular area you know, learns chitas and he's careful and he's medatic in chitas, then he causes a pocket uh, on the coin in the area where he is. And they won't, you know, they won't um, do anything to Yidin and Cholil, but as we'll soon see, they'll even, maybe even assist them, but they'll, they'll become for sure Botel uh, to the Yidin. So that's a big Musa Haskell that people say, what can we do now, uh, nowadays? You know, what can we possibly do that uh, Yidin, Rachmanin, Islam, Hoyer, Lishir, are going to give back or to give to uh, the whole Eretz soil to Goyim is what can we do? Is one of the things we have to do is to be Mesura in uh, the Indian of the Gimel Shuri Chitas. By keeping the Chitas, each one of us in our own individual way, then we cause Chitas Elikim El Al Heori, an old city, cause part of the a packet of the four packet of the team will fall on the goyim everywhere around, and nothing happened. Yankee yeah, Vino was tremendously concerned. He said, "Listen, you guys, you've, you've ruined me. <laughs> We've had it. We serve uh, goyim. We're going to come on us. What sort of a chance do we have? We're mistake, mispa. We're just uh, a, a few little people. What? Are, how are we going to face all this?" Unbelievable warfare that's going to come upon us. And the answer is nothing happened. That would appear that nothing happened. So the intelligent reader says, but wait a minute, something did happen. Things maybe did happen. Now, what's the hint that we have at that? Is it's uh, pretty unfair to expect of you guys to remember your kids from last year, right? not, not from what you've been learning up to now, but what you what you learned last year, but it's not very far from where we are now, and that's in uh, uh, the last seder at the end of the at the end of the sefer brachos when Yankov Vino is uh, just prior to his uh, whatever we will call uh, his stalkers, or his, his uh, hiding from our eyes or whatever it's called, because the Gemara says Yankov Vino didn't die. I mean, openly. The process I keep short of. Whatever happened over there is Yovino um, says to Yosef, just uh, prior to the soul reading, he says to Yosef, I'm going to give you uh, an extra portion in Eretz soil called Shechem. He says, it's called Shechem. That's the city of Shechem. That's going to be your special place. And he says to him, oh, this place Shechem, or oh, that's what I took away from the hands of the Amoiri, the Chalbi over Kashti. I took it away from the, the Goyim, you know, it's so called the Amoirium. I took it away with my sword and with my, my, uh, my bow. So, Babel Chur means his bow and arrow. So, it comes along Russia over there, you tell some of you remember it. So, it comes along Russia over there. <laughs> He says that um, uh, Yankov said to um, Yosef, he said, uh, uh, when Shimon Valevi, when Shimon Valevi, when they uh, killed all the people in, in Shechem, his council calls for he said, all the people all around did gather together. They did. They all got together. He's David to make war. That means you know, to make like a pair, to, to uh, take them on, to challenge them. Uh, with war. Please, David Lahem, the Choga, Yanki claim of Homakinegdo, and Yanki Bobino put on his claim of Hamar, in other words, his sword and his bow and arrow against him. But for now, something did happen and Yankee Vino had to put on his sword and his bow and arrow and he had to stand against these people but they all did get together and they all did you know, make a, an advance against Yankee Vino and he says that's the shot that I took it however a few lines further Rashi brings another shot 
which is brought down in Targum Onkelos, where he says that I took it away from Miyada Damoroa Bitsolosi Ubavuasi. I took it away from my with my prayer and with my uh, bakosha. So the, the Targum makes a very amazing tight word in the word kashti. He said that's like my request. Bakasha and Kesha's kashti yeah, can be, uh, have the same sort of letter. So the Targum Onkelos teaches that bakashti didn't mean my, my bow and arrow, it meant my requesting. I, I begged the Avis a little bit. I prayed to the Avis and I begged him. So we see that Rashi brings that, just a few lines further, Rashi brings that Pirush also. But in simple terms, he says that something did happen. So why didn't he say that over here? Why didn't Rashi bring that over here, that it really did happen? And over here, Rashi, oh no, they just all got full of pachat, all the goyims to settle on in the sphere of the Avista and kill her. Yeah, nothing happened. That's how it happened. Make up your mind. I think that something did happen or, or it didn't. And the amazing thing is that that statement that Rashi brings over here, way at the end, when the young of is already blessing his children, or just about to bless her, yeah, Rashi brings that, and that's written in, in the Madras Rabbah in this week's Pasha, around about this area, around about here. It's written clearly that this happened in the Madras, that they got all together, the peoples, they came towards Shem, and Yang Yovino, dressed up in his, uh, you know, his uh, bow and arrow, and he was connected against them. I did not say uh, what he actually did, but he just put on his bow and arrow and his sword, you know, against them. So the very fascinating thing is that the Madras says that he stood in the gateway of Shem. Now that Rashi doesn't bring over there, but it's written, <coughs> That uh, that he he stood in the gateway of um, oh that's it oh below a young a vino young who writes as he asked for Bono I said he didn't want that they should do that he was against uh, Simon Levy taking this action but hey when she also Bono I said they did what they did oh my my honey. Maniach has born, I live for Obiyad Kola Umi. Well, I'm going to let my children now, all the Umas are going to come. It's going to be big trouble now. Ma also, what did he do? Yang Yuvino, not with Kharboy, the Kashtoy, he took his sword and his bow, an arrow for Omad, out Piskos of Shem. And he stood in the gateway of Shem. Of Omar, Im Yavoy, Umas, or Elam, this Davik Lehem. Labona, if they come to make war against my sons, I need new come connect them. I'll, I'll be there and I'll make war with them. I like that. Yank of Vino on his own. <laughs> and he's standing in the gateway of Shem. And he got the whole, all the glory and the whole of it all, all around. Uh, and, and later we're going to see that some say that they even, that they even came from distant. And people were just, they heard about what went on. Is it Nineveh? They call it Nineveh. Yeah, Nineveh is a huge city called Nineveh. Well, that's way over at Facebook. It's not in it's not, it's not only when Ishkem, they got together a huge arm and they also came. Everybody was furious. Everybody was ready to take on Yagi Ravina. Yagi Ravina said, oh, yes. yeah, here I am, if they want. He said, let them start with me. I'm standing here in the gateway. Let them, if they want, let them take on me. So he was young with his. So uh, and, uh, and he said, Ooh, that's what he said later to Yosef. I took away from the Amiri, but Harabi Now the amazing thing is, we don't really find that he took away Shechem. I mean, he, he just stood in the gateway and then everybody quietened down and would appear. Everybody sort of did. Uh, and then Yankum and his sons went away, and that was it. So what does Yankum say? He took Shem, yeah, but how be over Kashti? That's also an interesting shot. How, what what does he took Shem? Because later on we're going to see that the Medra says that he bought that little piece of land outside the city, and that's where Yosef is buried. And so the cave of Yosef, which is up there in Shem, but the Medra says that the Goyim have no right to that. Only did because they, Yankovina paid money for it. Just like the Miles of Makpela, 
Yeah, the, the Goyim don't have any right to anything in Eretz Yisrael because it was all given by the Abishta. Oh, but even they understand that they have no right against the Ma'as HaMakayla. Why? Because Avram Avinu paid how much for it? Arba Meyei Shekel Kesha. I just read it in the Torah a couple of weeks ago. That was big money. Yeah, and he weighed up big gold pieces. By Ishkuel, Avram, what was his name over there? The Goyim. Ephraim. I mean, they weighed up these big gold pieces. Big money. A young Vino bought this little piece outside Shechem. Not for such big money. The truth is, it wasn't, it wasn't anything like Abba Mei Shekel, but he bought it. And he paid money for it. So even a guy understands that where somebody paid money, then, <laughs> and you haven't taken away from him since, then it belongs to him. Yet ever, the, the matter's here, in this, in this matter, it's amazing. I found it just here, a, a bit far ahead. And the matter says that the Goyim all admit that uh, Maras HaMakpela belongs to the Eden, absolutely, no doubt. The Beis Hamikdash belongs to the Eden, because it's written that, um, yeah, that David Miller took money from all the Shvatim, and he bought the place where the Beis Hamikdash was built from a guy called Ar- 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 Arabno, what was his name, Arabno, Arabno. He was a Goya, a Yavusi. And he, he actually owned that area and, and, and David Amel paid him big money. Even though David Amel was already sitting in Earth as well, which had been conquered by the Eden only a, a couple of generations ago, or a, a, quite a long time ago. Nonetheless, he paid him money to, to Attica, keep him quiet and get him off. Paid him a lot of money, but that he gathered together from all the, all the Shvatia, from all the, uh, what do you call it? So, from all the tribes. And my mother, they have no argue that both of those places belong uh, unarguably to the Jewish people. However, it's written here that he took the whole of Shechem. So maybe what the Medrash means is that the Angevino, since his sons just conquered it, absolutely. And then he stood later in the gateway and he said, oh, who wants to come? and fight against me, because I'm great, but I'm ready for him, Yang have been on his own, then he, he, he literally purchased the whole of Shem, we can say, by what's called Kibush Milchama, that if you conquer something, Mamish, then it becomes sure. That, that's called Kibush Mil, Milchama. And I mean, we can say that Yang have took over the whole of Shem, and everybody recognized it. There was nobody had any doubts about it. And goes along the matter, and we have to say this is a very interesting shita in the Medrash Rabba Davkin, that uh, in the Medrash Rabba uh, they hold that, uh, that the whole thing that happened with Yang Gavino and uh, Shem after the, the visit with his sons, it was all a peaceful thing. There was really no war, and there was really no trouble whatsoever. Because it's written here. After that message we just quoted, by Yisov, by Yichit HaSelekim, Oma Rabbi Shmuel, Veshloisha Mekoyimais, Nishkansu, Uyde Chechovim, Vaseis Mokhama in Bnei Yankei, Veloyhiniach Lehem HaKodesh Pohu. There were three times the Goyim gathered together on Masai, had to go to a lot, you know, a lot of them together, to make war against the Yidden, and the Ebesh didn't let them Abish to stop them and they weren't able to do it. And the first one that brings this here in, in the case of Shem, how do we know that? Ki chitas elikim. There was a scene in the chitas, the fear, the pacha, the Abish on the Goyim. And so therefore, for that it appears that the Goyim wanted to make war, but the Abish didn't allow because it was chitas elikim. I know what you have, you know, stood in the gate when he said, he wants to take me on, here I am. And later he says to you, he said, yeah, I shall attack him, I don't know, there wasn't any war really, he didn't really fight anybody. He just stood in the way. And he said, okay, whoever, and all these big guys from Ninve and all the armies and all this, <laughs> tell this back to him. And I said, oh, well, not for us. We can't take on this guy called Yaakov. And they all, uh, they all just uh, <coughs> retreated. And the same happened in two other places. Well, we won't go into the details, but one of them was in, in Eretz Yisrael with Yehoshua. And another was in the time of Yonason ben Shaul when he fought against the Plishtim. 
uh, that there was also a big amazing thing where the Goyim just uh, 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 were not able to fight. So, from that we see that that we could suggest is uh, Rashi's approach. Because Rashi says here, he doesn't mention anything about there being any war or any trouble or anything of that nature. He just says Pacha. The, the, the fellow Pacha, the Davis on the Goyim, that's all that happened. And I, what he says over here in the Pasha of Yechi, he said, what I took from Bechal of Yom Bekashti, he doesn't say there was a big war, he doesn't say there was a big fight, he just says, I took, yeah, it does, that I put on my clay Milchama, Kenegdom, but not that he fought, he didn't actually fight for him, he just put on his clay Milchama, and like the Medrash Rabba brings here, that he stood in the gateway, I remember nothing happened, but there was a mamela, huh? he stood in the gateway. So therefore we can say that the shit at the Medras Rabbah, which is one arm, that's a Medras of Eretz Yisrael, that's a Chakmai Eretz Yisrael, not the Chakmai Bob. That's the Chakmai and the Chakmai are in Eretz Yisrael. And the Chakmai and Eretz Yisrael, as they appear in the Medras Rabbah, and they hold that everything was peaceful. Even though Yang had been attacked and put on his, Yang had been himself. Listen, guys, you have to, uh, you, I can't have this popping up and down business. I mean, if you really know to go to the toilet, then you can go. But you have to come back. You know, it's a little popping up and down like a lot of, you know, some sort of dolls or something. This one goes, there, gate, there, come. Kind of zits in there. You can't, can't sit a half an hour here, so if you do it, tell it, what's it? I'm not man. From that, it follows that according to the shit uh, at a Medrash Rabbah, Everything was peaceful, even though Yankovino took his weapon. I and that's what he brings over there. He just said, I, I, I prepared against them. Kenegdo. Or Rashi didn't say Nilchamti Kenegdo or Nilchamti Itam. He just said, I stood ready, and that was it. And that's what the Medrash writer subs all up by saying that they, they all did gather around. They wanted very much to make war. Abalahi Nirflahemakoshpo, Kita, Pacha. Fell on them, but over Rashi this is Pacha. He doesn't mention anything more than that. And over there, in Pasha Riyachi, it's very interesting that Rashi is almost, uh, he's one of the few that learns that chapter over there. Because all of them learn, when the Yaakov said, I took Bechabi or Bekashi, he's referring to the future. That when they didn't go into El Tzisol, they're going to take everything by war, and part of that will be Shechem, and they'll give that part to Yosef. Rashi learns it's referring back to this whole amazing thing that happened here. And therefore, as he says, that it all happened, Ali Dei Tfilose, Ali Dei, yeah, in your friend, Tfila. What if he's there, it'll be very good. That what happened was, that Yan Kibavino, with his unbelievable prayer, Ruchani, as he took a prayer to the Avista, and a prayer of a person like Yan Kibavino, well, that was Moira, as one of the citizens, he's been to Sarachim. And remember, that was Moira, Lamaila. An unbelievable killer of Rachim, Mino Shamayim, and therefore everything looked terribly threatening. And here we are, you know, insults and kibbals, you guys. Look at what you've done to me. Look at what's happening. And then in the end, nothing happened. Keep shooting. I, yeah, something did happen. They all gathered around, but they all just fell away. And according to that earlier part, we said they saw a young human, that was enough. Oh, he's standing there with his sword. And if you bow and arrow, what's a sword and a bow and arrow? So I can't call it against whole armies. And a firm, we can say that the Medrus learns that it all happened, Medrus Rabba learns that it all happened peacefully, even though it was warlike, but it finished off in a peaceful way. And that would be very, um, uh, my team would have a very appropriate to what we saw this week, the whole Indian, and we're going to see next week in more our recess, the whole Indian of Koda B'Sholem Nafshi. Yeah, with the Mitzel Rebbe, and with the Alta Rebbe, the, 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 what you might call the, the word, and the, uh, the, how do you call it, the motto of Yud Kislev, and the motto of Yud, of Yud Tes Kislev is Koda B'Sholem Nafshi. Mikrovli, from the battle that there was against him. But it was part of Petroleum, a Padilla by way of peace. So we 
would say that here's a prime example. The Medrash Rabba maps out a whole uh, uh, thing that happened, but it didn't happen. It could have happened, it was about to happen, and it didn't. So that means that there was an attempt, there was a Yisraelis of Krog, of war, battle. But the end was part of the Shalim at all. It was redemption with peace. Nothing, nothing really happened. I argue with him, so said over there, did happen? He doesn't say that. He just said, that I, I put on my, I had to put on my, my clay Muhammad, I put them on, right? The Medrash brings it, he stood in the gateway. Go up, finish. Okay. Gandhi. In other words, it was a slight trace of Muhammad, of a big it was part of the Shalom. Part of the Shalom Nash. Now, <clears throat> we find that there's certain Medrashim, not quite like that, and there's certain Medrashim, that they want to say that really there was a war. And it's brought down by Rishas. A few uh, Medrashi Chazal, which are from uh, other Medrashim outside the Medrashah. Not, not the Medrashah. No, other Medrashim. Where it's written that in effect, Yankov Avinu, even when he left Shem on his way up to base Kael, there was a war. And there was a war, albeit it was, a, uh, it was a, a miraculous victory, but it was a war. And it was a war against a big army, like we said before, from Ninveh. <laughs> a big country that was outside the whole area. What does it, it matter to them? What do they care? Oh, yes, they care. They care. The Yidden, that can't be. If the Yidden have any flock, or the Yidden should have anything, that can't be. And if I, just like you got today, everybody's making a fast out of this Iran. And he didn't want them to have to that for some weird reason which you'll never be able to figure. So they, they persuaded the, 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 the crazy president from America when he's like, I told him, so he also believes that he, he can, as soon as Syria even smacks the idea of a, an atom plant, you have to bomb it right on the spot. Anybody else bomb on the spot? Uh, the guy in Iran, oh, no, you have to let him do it. <laughs> uh, you have to let him build up and become a big knob in the whole world. And he's bossing everybody around, and, and the Russians are pouring uranium into it. Ah, da, 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 da. Everything is happening. Yeah, Because the Yidden decided they have to have some excuse. There's got to be something. And you say, oh, he's just so strong, we can't do anything with him. In, middle, uh, in those days, it was Ninve. Ninve was the big boss. <laughs> Ninveh was a huge place, <laughs> had a king, very strong king, had a huge army, very powerful. Uh, they had a uh, 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 what do they call it, draft in America, they call it the draft. They had this huge draft, they had a huge army. So it's written that the Ninveh's, uh, Ninveh, I don't know what, they, what their name was, they came and made a big war. It's young, you know, after he'd gone away from Shechem, he was on his way back to base Kale, and there was a big war, boom, trust, a war. But nonetheless, Yankee Vino and his sons beat him. I was sitting over there in, in Vaichi that Yankee Vino said, I said, look, Kashti, Miyada, Ewe, Bechavi, Bechashti. It appears it was a war. I took it was a, a, a war. So they say, or that same Medrash says that there was another war. That Yankee Vino got back and after you were beaten out of soil, <coughs> after you took a Vino. Uh, after he used his stalkers and everything, Yanki Rabina said, oh, yeah, they, my son's conquered that place, uh, Shechem, maybe we should go back and we'll take it over, and we'll take Shechem for ourselves. Yanki Rabina went back uh, six or seven years after the whole thing happened, Yanki Rabina went back to Shechem, and he tried to take over Shechem as part of, you know, part of like uh, 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 the, uh, what you might call the ownership and the land of uh, the Bnei Yanki. Oh, then the going got angry. I said, oh, not only he made a whole mess here, a few years ago he came back to take it into his pocket, and then there was another big war. There was a whole big war, and all the going came and they made war against uh, Yanki, and he beat them again. <laughs> he beat them, albeit miraculously, but he beat them. Uh, and it was a big war. So we see from there that according to those Madrashim, there was actually a realization of Yanko Vina's first concern. He said, listen, you guys have made me a lot of trouble in the eyes of all the... Uh, the Goyim, in effect, 
He was right. There was a, a big organized attempt on the part of what you might call the Iranians in those days, you know, the big knobs and the big schwitzers and the big, you know, uh, troublemakers and began to do it. The day Taka did come against Yaakov Avinu, but he beat them. He beat them and he got, he got them all out of the way and then he went up to base camp. So it comes along the, so the, the helicopter of Avinu, this is an amazing thing. So the Rabbeinu, Rabbeinu, I looked up in the Rabbeinu Bahaya and he says, wait a minute, you know, we don't see any mention in the, anywhere of such a war. I mean, a big war, Ninveh, a, a huge war. That, that, that should have been yeah, written something about it. It should appear somewhere yeah, in the in the Pasukim or something. And that what the argument says later, with like, Kaktim, Yadavah, Mayri, doesn't really tell any details, doesn't say what happened. The argument is that a bow and an arrow and a sword. I mean, what, what really happened, I think nobody's told. So it comes along to the Rabbeinu Bechaye, and he says that there's certain great nisim in the Torah that are not mentioned anywhere in the Torah. Even though they're great nisim, and we base a lot of our thinking in the Torah on those nisim. So let's see if you can come up with one. I suppose that's being a bit unfair. Can't come up with one nest. It's not written anywhere on the Torah, but it's a very big nest and it's very important. Purim? Purim is written, all Megillah, all about Purim. Hanukkah? Yeah, Hanukkah, yeah. I'm talking about before, before where we are. Before we got as far as we did. The sun starts with like his gears. Yeah, yeah, very nice. The sun stopped yeah, by Moshe Rabbein. Yeah. That's by Moshe Rabbein. So, what do you want better than uh, Avram Avinu? What did they do to Avram Avinu? They threw him into a kitchen slave. Threw him into a kitchen slave and he came out. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty amazing mess. A guy gets thrown into a, a burning huge furnace. They made all the bricks in those days in these furnaces. And that, 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 it was Nimrod. He was, a, he was the big ruler. He was the big uh, Nazi of Iran in those days. Just uh, how do you call him? Nimrod. And Avram really comes out, nothing, nothing happened to him. I think that must have made a huge impression. <laughs> it did. <laughs> made an amazing impression. <laughs> Not mentioned anywhere in the two. I don't find a, a mention of it anywhere. We're told that Nimrod is about about that it happened as us at time. Well, it came in on him, even by the far forefathers, we can find Nisim, which happened to them, they are not mentioned uh, in the Pasukim. So it comes along the Rabbeinu Bechayi, and he said that the certain Nisim, which for reasons known to the Torah, it didn't reveal to us uh, uh, these Nisim. And he said because they're not really tremendously important to the development of what the Pasukim want to tell us. But they're very important in a general way to the to the whole Indian of Yiddishkeit. And therefore they do get appeals to Ali Day Medrashe Chazal. Although for some reason, due to the fact that the Torah is tremendously brief, it didn't seem necessary to mention that, that particular name. So he says that that's what happened with Yankov when he came out of Shem and he fought Ninva, he fought Mamish the Iranian. <laughs> he fought the whole Iranian Empire. Yeah, with, uh, with his sons and with a, uh, you know, with a few bows and arrows and a few swords. And he beat them all. Well, that's an amazing nest. But he said, just like the, the Torah didn't reveal Ur, the, the, the nest of uh, Avram, you know, the Ur Kastim, in the same way the Torah didn't reveal and wasn't a far saying that he could not publicize of that nest. Oh, but the nest actually is very, very important and we should know it. And the nest is that even though Yahweh you know, is absolutely out, adequate, outnumbered, legamre, by these peoples, nonetheless, you know, the war was uh, just absolutely swept forward, and the Bnei Yaakov just kept going, and the whole army of Nineveh just fell aside. <laughs> and that's what, that's what the Rabbein of Chai said, and he says it's one of the Nisim and Historium Hagedoyim, that's what he said. And he, when he calls it a Nes Nistar, he doesn't mean he couldn't see the Nes. He means that it's Nistar, but it's not, it's not revealed in the, in the term. And then this other Nes, that young Vina came back to Shrem, and he fought another war, he said that's even better. <laughs> it's there. All the peoples got around, and they came against Yankee Vina, who is inside Shrem, and 
it, once again, he beat all these goyim, beat them out completely, and it was a tremendous victory. And Yaakov Avinu took Shem, and that's what he meant by saying over there, Asher lekachti miyadu amiru, mechar v'yu v'kashti. But we don't find in Rashi any remnants was ever found. We don't find in Rashi. It doesn't say anything like that. And even over there, Rashi said he just put on his clay mechon, connecto, against them, just to say, look here, you guys, and like the Medrash Rabbah said, he stood in the gateway of Shem. He said, here I am, you guys. Yaakov Avinu on his own. Not Yehuda, Yehuda was a tremendous warrior. And not Levi, not Shimon, they were big warriors. No, Yahweh, poor old Yahweh, I mean, himself. An elderly man, you know, stands in the gateway and puts that. Yeah, come and we'll take you on. <coughs> and that seems to be the shit that I made to and that's enough for Yahweh to say, I shall look after I took Shem, Shem belongs to me for that reason. Even though Rupeo, in the Medrash says he only bought you know, the actual burial place where Yosef was buried now, is, which is an area just outside Shem. And if you go to KV Yosef, you go right through Shem, you go out to the, to the outside. Because in Emerson, the KV Yosef is a little bit out on the, on the outside of Shem, but, uh, uh, but it's written that even the Goyim agree, uh, uh, even the worst Goyim agree that that really belongs to the Yidden, uh, even though. They, they don't know about all the whole divine promise of the to sort to the Eden because they're too busy you know, being busy with all their nourish and maishas. And if the feast it follows that the way Rashi looks at the whole thing Chitas Elikim is like the secret it's like a pachad a divine pachad falls on Goyim if you go in a certain way what is the way? We see another amazing thing. If you look earlier, when Yaakov meets up with Asa. Now just imagine, here Asa is coming, and Rashi said he had Arba Meyosh Ish Imoy. Rashi said, the third said, he had 400 men with him. Now these 400 men were all big, you know, had occurred gangsters and big machers in the, in the, what you might call the warlike, uh, 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 the market of those days, they were all what they called warlike, dangerous guys. So no doubt they had all the up-to-date, you know, weapons and had, you know, hidden rockets and on them and all uh, what they didn't have. Uh, all these Arba Meishish Imoy. And here's Ace of coming with Arba Meishish and Paul the young you know, with his kinderlech and with his death. So young you know, sends him off a a mincha, you know, about altogether, if you add it all up, it's something like 550 individual animals. He actually sent him, and the whole business with 550, that the number of musafim that used to be offered in the Beis Amitish in one year was 550. So the musafim in the Beis Amitish uh, are connected with this whole uh, thing. What he sent, he sends him to Asia, he sends him a mincha, and then later on Asia comes with his whole album, Ishi Moi, Oh, and then they see he jumps off the off his horse or whatever it is, and he runs and he gives young you know a, a kush. Uh, he embraces him, kushed him. So in uh, uh, there's a medrash and brought down the time of Anderson that he wanted to bite his neck, and then all of a sudden the Amish to turn it into shayish, into marble. So he broke all his teeth. Uh, it's a put down a tagum Yenison Benazil. It's a famous uh, method. Chazal. Rashi doesn't bring that. Rashi just brings it really ace of hates Yaakov. He, even at that moment, he, deep in his heart, he hated him. He couldn't hold himself back and he, 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 he had a good. He embraced him with his whole heart. He really meant it. Poor old, yeah. The poor old Fadreta Ace of. I don't know if he's so poor old, but whatever. Yeah, he. At that particular moment, yeah, he meant it bad, meant it bad. I mean, and so then later on, here he is, you know, he's Alvin Meyes, he's, he's the big fellow boss in the whole area, he's got all the military power, he's everything. And yeah, all of a sudden he says, well, maybe we'll go together now, we're all going to stick together, and we'll be good buddies. And, so yeah, I'm going to say, no, my dear boy, you know, you go your way, and I'll go, <laughs> I'll go my way, and I'll, you know, I've got a lot to do, and you know, I've got a lot of children, and I'm and I'm here, 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 and I'm
And he says, I'll eventually come to meet you over there in your place called Soir. And what is Rashi saying? He says, eventually, the Yosef Lavi, when Moshiach will come, I'll come back to you. All of Moshiach and Bahatsi and Lishpeit as Har Eita. That there's going to be a big thing with Hezbun against Eita. And it's going to be dark in Jerusalem, and the Abes is going to be together with the Eden, and they're going to judge the Har Eita. And Rashi brings out that that's what he hinted at him, and yeah, Eita wasn't such a big now. He, he was far from being a fool. So he realized what Yahweh was saying to him. That it's not for him, and, it's not, and that eventually, Miyudea, uh, what's well, really going to be the Emmas of Saul. That Yahweh and the Abishta are going to rule in the world. Melacham Shia. I think, I think, Josh, 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 And Esau just backs off, and he just says, oh, yeah, bye bye. And it's written by Yosho, Esau, by Yemahu, the dark. Yeah, and Esau just went, you know. Back, even though he'd come there with the intention of killing him. <laughs> he came with the intention of wiping him out, or at least slipping him along and, and making him part of his uh, 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 way of life and losing the whole concept of Yankov and his children. And all of a sudden he just goes away. And not only that, right, she says that the 400 men, they all gave up about it. One after the other, they all dropped out. They all decided that, you know, this guy's upside. Yeah, he's a butler and yeah, he's not the big uh, gangster leader that we thought he was and they all dropped off one after the other. You look in Russia, you'll see. Russia says they all went one after the other and they all left him alone. So that when Asia got back to, to his area where he lives, he was without anybody. Well, he was just a, he was just a big knob, but he didn't have all of his entourage and the whole thing was lost. So we see an amazing thing. Uh, Yankov doesn't really do anything to him, never said anything to him, gave him a gift. And I was there, and I do it. He gives him a kush, written him a, a few sentences, and yeah, cha, 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 is off, and little by little, all of his foreign ministers leave him, and all of that. He's left on his own. He, he goes back with his tail between his legs to the so here. Yeah. <laughs> what is going on around here? So, yeah, well, we have to say that Rashi learns that the whole Pasha is part of the Sholem Nafshi, that we see that the whole Indian, me, Rasha, the Ad Safer, everything is an able from part of the there should have been a war, there wasn't really. And there was a bit of a war where uh, uh, Yahoo stood in the gateway and he said, you take me on. Uh, uh, nobody took on. Everything was in the even from Pachat Elohim. It was all a divine nest that the Pachat of the apes that fell on all these in Yon. So what do we see that was two different in Yon? And we could suggest, but there are possibility, there was like two stages or two in Yon. The first of all, Yahoo and Ace would meet up. And that's be Ikar, or that's a Rufinus Dikazar. Because nothing really happens. I mean, Yaakov sends him a, 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 a gift. But to some of the great before you say that that was like on Yom Kippur, we send out a Soil Azor, you know, they send the, 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 what they call the scapegoat, how they call it in English. They used to send out a goat to Azor. Uh, so it's brought down that that's like the gift that Yaakov gave to Esau. That you've got to buy up the Sutra Akra, you've got to give them a certain thing. And once they see that they're getting something, so they, all the, uh, the Makatri him and all the unpleasant um, angels all drop off. So, the same way, Yanka would have sent him his gift, and gradually he lost his soul. Uh, he dropped off. But we see that, that nothing really happened over there except Ruf and his dick in Yon. Yanka would have sent him all oh, yeah, and he said, Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then it was just, it all just faded away and the Yankov just goes on his own and takes everything easy. He didn't intend going with him anyway and not going anywhere near him. Uh, so what happened is that the next thing is there's a new test that Yankov and his sons have got to show yeah, that they really are educating and running the world and really the power of the world is not in the hands of, of the Iranians and not in the hands of the Americans or anybody. It's in the hands yeah, of Yankee Rubano. What happens? They come into Shechem, and it happens over there uh, an immoral thing, an improper thing. 
a very important thing that involved uh, Bas Bas Yankoi. I said, there are Chaim HaKadosh Karol, because that this is one of the Sheva Mitzvahs Penei. One of the Sheva Mitzvahs Penei that is forbidden for the Goyim to behave immorally. They're not allowed to, to do a thing like that. So there's a big question, was it really the type of immorality that's forbidden because she wasn't married? A hidden, a whole series of discussions, but nonetheless, that's what the, the, the what he comes to, the, the, how do you call it, the, uh, what Chaim HaKadosh reaches the conclusion that they shouldn't have done that, uh, the people of Shechem. So uh, the people of Shechem didn't do it. I mean, it was uh, their ruler, his son, that did it. So he says uh, that they should have, there's another Sheva Mitzvah's Benin, one of the Mitzvah's of the Benin Noah, that you have to have an ordered system of justice. And you've got, you got to have uh, uh, courts, and you've got to judge people, make sure they don't get away with the improper thing, even the Goyim. There's got to be a you know, proper uh, judging system. That's called Bati Mishpat, but they're not supposed to be based on some old Turkish or Ottoman law or something. They're supposed to be based on the Sheva Mitzvah's uh, base, uh, 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 and uh, B'nai Noya, it's got to be built on a proper, but none of it. Most of what the Goyim nowadays have in their Bati Mishpat have got a certain trace of, you know, basic justice, and that's got to do with the Sheva Mitzvah's B'nai Noya. So therefore, the Rechaim HaKadu said, these people in Shechem, they should have gone to the ruler of Shechem, the father of this guy somewhere in Shechem, they should have gone to Shechem himself. And they should have said, listen here, we can't allow that, we have to set up a base Mishpat, to judge uh, your son, see if he did the right thing, you know, he just the wrong thing, according to the show of Mitzvah's B'nai Noah. And since they didn't do that, and therefore, as far as the B'nai Yankee understood, they were Chayim. They were Chayim Mish. And therefore, they came and they, they said, I'm wise, everybody Chayim Mish. Right, right, that the judge of the people, the, the main Adikoim, the, 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 the local judge or something, he should be Chayim Mish. So they say, no. That every, all Goyim are responsible for this union. He runs a very interesting chapter in uh, And he says, not just the local judge, but he said, all Goyim are supposed to take responsibility if they see responsibility is not being taken, to organize a, a proper court that would try somebody who was not, even if the normal justice system is not taking action, then even ordinary people can take action to see that some sort of proper uh, law or decision be taken. They didn't do that. Boom! <laughs> yeah, the Bnei Yankiv really uh, stepped in and took uh, a, a form of what you might call divine revenge against uh, the city of Shechem. Yankiv, you know, he was so upset because Yankiv, you know, say some people, he heard that since they after all made Milo, <laughs> even though they made the Milo because they wanted, they thought they were going to get something from that. Oh, they made the Milo. Then Yang Yankovin held that since they'd made Milo, that was a sign that they wanted to become maybe Miskaya. They wanted to be Miskaya to the Bnei Yankov BMS. And therefore he felt that he could judge them like ordinary Goyim and he should have dealt with them slightly differently. That's what the, the assignment was. Other people write the same idea. And therefore Yang Yankovin wasn't so sure that what they'd done was right. Or in the end, he stuck with his sons. He stuck with them. And he held that they had done the right thing, ultimately speaking. And therefore, we see that that is a new move. Well, that's not just a move that there's a spiritual union in the world that didn't uh, determine certain things by by Esau, and that they show that really their spiritual power is the Ika. But here we see Yidin moved into the world, and they took a, a, a certain physical control a certain act in the physical world which shows that there's a, a, an ability of Yidin to determine the, the, what you might call the destination of a whole city according to the Sheva Mitzvah's Panay Noyach or even deeper than that. Maybe even according to certain other calculations to be Magayad or Alpha Panay to consider that under the conditions of Kekere Bakuli Bakuli. And therefore later when the Goyim around, tried to make trouble, young Yankovina stood in the gateway and he said, oh, in, or in favor of his son. And he said, oh no, you want, you, you want to take me on? <laughs> and then, yeah, according to the Medrashal, according to Rashi, all of a sudden everything, everything just settled down, nobody made any trouble. Chita, Eloki. 
So that's indicatory of a new type of control. That here Yidin took over control, Mamish, in the Gash, mystical world, even to the point of throwing Pachad on Goyim, who had good reasons, in their terms, to make war. They had all the weapons, they had everything that would be required, and the poor they didn't, or whatever. And I feel, according to those other Medrashim, that they did. They did, in effect, make war, but they really copped it. It didn't pay them. The whole war was low to save us a cloud. They got just wiped out. And so it was really an evil thing for them to have started the war. And even according to that matter, that they did. And therefore, they didn't make war. And the far younger people said later, I should look after you. Miyada Amiri Bakar Vibakashti, yeah without any alcohol upon him. However you learn. And the and the and the Rabbina Bakha said it's a very big in it was a hidden net. So I feel a little fee that it, there was also a big divine intervention, even though it involved activity of war. But a big net. And he said it's one of the important nisim in the Torah. This is what uh Rabbina Bakai. So the feast is there. We see a, a, a very important connection with the Yonim. First of all, in the Yonim Tavim that we've just been through. And Satan says, in the whole situation that we are now in the world, just very, very briefly, the, there's two Yonim Tavim close to one the other, both of which are under the motto, Potter Bisholim, Nash. There's Yud Kisla, well, that's a, it follows Tess Kisla. <coughs> The Yahzite and the Yom HaGiula, uh, the Mittal Arabia, one yeah, close to the Marish, uh, Besmifus, one to the other. And then there's a few days later, there's Yuteskis, well, that's the, the, the famous Yom HaGiula, <coughs> uh, the altar. And it's well known, the famous uh, uh, Ramah, uh, the altar of Hasidim, and uh, given over by the river uh, uh, Melech HaMashiach. That Yud Kislev is the birthday of a Chosin. Yud Kislev is the day that Kili get born as a, a Chosin. And Yud Tes Kislev is the Blitz. That's the day of your circumcision. The day of your Blitz. So they have a connection, one with the, uh, one with the Angie. Now we could say that the, so the Rebbe says, so we could say the Rebbe said, the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach says that if you look, You'll see that the pot of Bisholim Nafshi of the Mitla Rebbe has got a very close connection with what happened. Because he got out on the 10th day of Kislev. When you say the Tehillim according to the days of the month, the other way we say Tehillim, then on the 10th day it's Kapitul Nun Hay. And in Kapitul Nun Hay it's written pot of Bisholim Nafshi, which means that the day the, the, the Mitla Rebbe gets out, well, that's the day that we say pot of Bisholim Nafshi. But I think about the Alter Rebbe, Emmas, the Alter Rebbe was saying that possibly we let him out, but the Alter Rebbe was saying a lot of Tilim, because there's the Fidik Rebbe gave over that the Alter Rebbe, when he was in prison, he said a lot of Tilim the whole time, he was saying by memory, and he used to say each day, according to how the, uh, there's like seven portions in the Tilim, one against each day of the, of the week. That's a lot more on one day, the big section, the Sefer. On one day, there's on the, on the, on the Yom Ashli, but it was uh, Tuesday when he was let out according to that year on the Yom HaShlishi the Alter Rebbe was saying that section of Yom HaShlishi part of Bishon. but the Rebbe points out that that's only for people who say you know a lot of Tilim every day that they would get somehow or another on Yutis Kisla to, to part of Bishon. Oh, but the Mitzvah Rebbe is what everybody most people do and they say yeah, according to how it's divided in the days of the month and they say part of Bishon and boom on the day of Ayut Kisla. So the, the, the Rebbe's point is that there's even more part of Bisholim by the middle of the Rebbe than there is by the other. <laughs> I mean, that's typical of the Rebbe. <laughs> the Rebbe Mano Hashir finds all these unbelievable difficulties and turn everything somewhat uh, upside down a little bit to what you, what you were under the impression prior to that. So what is the, what is the point? <clears throat> And that would fit in rather nicely with what we've just been learning. Uh, the Rebbe says that even though in time, uh, uh, Yud Kislev in the month occurs before Yud Tess, it's the birth and not the, not the birth, but nonetheless in, in, in historical order they happened 
that the altar of his uh, Gula occurred before the middle of his Gula. So the Rebbe wants to say that the main Indian of the altar Rebbe and his Gula was like a, a, a big spiritual Indian that introduced the other whole year of Panimus into the world, but there are Chochman, but there are Hanakuda, Mumayla, Lamanta. The middle of the Rebbe, he's Bina. Bina means that you get moving. Bina means you understand. You get moving. Mumata, Lamayla. What happened in Yud Kisla was a tremendous chidim because the Rebbe. That it's Mumata, Lamayla, and the Gula, and the Pula, Pnimis Atura, according to what the middle of the Rebbe indicated. What he is represented, what he brought into the world, was that we as people, we have the ability to be Mishan of the whole world, no matter what, Myla, and everything can happen. In the physical world, no matter what, no matter what, and that's a Myla Bina compared to Chach. And even the Rebbe said that's why when you didn't meet, one says Shalom Alechem, and the other one says Alechem Shalom. <laughs> This is the old, the old idea that you didn't always say fakir. You say what something to him, you'll tell him the opposite. Okay, you say to him, Shalom Aleichem, he says, Aleichem Shalom. So the Rebbe says, Shalom Aleichem is you to this Kislev. Shalom, you know what I mean? Upon him, Shalom. Coming down, Mumayla, Aleichem, upon you. Of a Yud Kislev, the middle of the Rebbe is Aleichem Shalom. You take the whole Aleichem, the whole Rebbe, the whole people down here, and you all elevate them up into Shalom. Yeshlema, I don't know what happened here with 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 with, with Yaron Gimavina. Yeah, first of all, there was you you test this. There was he made he made up with Esau. I mean, you test this. You put it the, the, by the tar. So the Esau, you put in the prison, and the tar came to see the altar. You know the story. The tar came in the cell to visit the altar. He hid himself. I you know, disguised himself, and the altar picked him immediately. As soon as he walked in, the altar was at a bro that you say on kings of the boy. So the child was out of his cane and said, how did you know who I am? <laughs> so the altar of said, because immediately you came in, I felt an extra makshove in Yerashamayim. And he said that you're supposed to feel a certain Yira for a king, even for the kings of Goy. So he said, the fact that I all of a sudden felt a little bit of extra Yerashamayim when you came in, I realized that you must be a king. So that he was just completely out of his cane. And his eyes rolled out and stood, you know, he, he was really, he was really uh, finished, you know, when he, when he heard that. So you see from that, maybe you can persuade them to be, maybe you can talk to the master of them. No, no, don't shout at them, don't shout at them. what I told him not to do. If you shout at him, they'll do it for them. It doesn't hurt. You have to talk to the nice one. You must talk to the nice one. You're there. You're there. Take two or four to the top. Take two or four. Take two or four. Take two or four. Oh, oh. You did exactly what I told you not to. Tetsuo puts in my passage. You did exactly what I told you not to. You started shouting at him. It doesn't help. That just makes them happy. That's exactly what they wanted. <laughs> I shall? Yes, I you have to talk to them very nicely. I met a few, a whole bunch of them up in the, the dorms there when I played football. Not these guys, but guys from the top. And so I walked on them very nicely. I just said, listen guys, you know, why I play here, it's much better if you play downstairs. I enjoy it much more. I mean, I said, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> they were very happy with the suggestion and they went down. <laughs> That's the way you have to talk to them, you know, you have to play much better if you go outside. And you, much more fun and everything. It's a, it's a shower of moon. <laughs> it's a fight of the night. Anyway, we just have to put out we're, we're, we're getting fairly close to the conclusion of our discourse. So from that we see that the middle of 
Rebbe is the Tuhula in the world of Nomala, Maila the Bada Basholim. So the whole world becomes full of Fila, the Pashtas in Gashmi Sa'ila, it becomes full of the Sholim of the Emesa Inyan of Torah, El Kus Pagolui, that unites all the Inyanim in the world together and brings them all in the form of Sholim. I mean, that's what we see that uh, in Daki in, in, in Yud Kisra, we can say that the whole thing that happened with the Bnei Yankov and Shem is an indication that Eden not only spiritually are the center of the world, and not only Asa eventually realizes that that's the case and he just uh, backs off, of but he hold, uh, 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 what you might call, his whole situation in the world has to be and can be determined by him. And they take over to the point that even when they show all their spiritual muscle, and that's what Yitzchak said to Esau, al char you will know according to your sword, the din can also beat him at that one. And what's their answer? Chita! Fear and pocket from the Abishta that he comes with all of his bombs and the in on him his heart. A young man in the stands and the guy was trying to do a solo right In other words, that you can take over even in the physical world. One is preposterous, no matter the mind. And that Chassidus can take over everything so much that it can just determine the welfare of everything in a way that everything gets ultimately turned for the better. And what is the Emerson better? It gets turned the way the Emerson wants it. The Emerson Lamita. Because nobody wants it, he shall be wiped out. Everybody just wants it. He should take his right place and not boss people around. I, who's going to boss who? Didn't have to, they're the ones who have to, have to say in the world. And the closer it gets to Moshiach, the more it's necessary for him to talk out. And that's what the Rebbe Malach Moshiach said all the time. <coughs> and that is the big chara that didn't have gone exactly the other way. They've gone back underneath Asa and they said, yeah, you have to run the world. You have to tell us what to do. We have no air for our own self. What is the answer? As I said, the answer is chitas. You have to be medactic in the things that the Rebbein told us to do. And one of the things of chitas is speech. And you speak out, you bring things out into Dibu, you learn Tanya, the Dibu, you learn Tehillim, you say Tehillim. And the same with the Chumash, you read the Chumash, and you bring things out, you talk about it, you gather it into the world, talk to people in the same way, you meet somebody in the street, talk to them about what you learned in the Chumash. Tell him what you said in the Tiller, tell him what the time is about. Tell him yeah, anything which has got to do with the words of the Rabbeim and particularly the Rebbe, and believe effect that will cause a part of the Rakim to fall on the world. It'll cause a part of the Rakim to fall on the world. Believe and so And that's the only evening that I can see that is left to us to do. Because everything else is just being pushed as a regular. Nothing has any power or any worth anymore, that is the only thing that we, we remain with. That's what the Torah hints us, that you have to be firm in the Sinian until you can come to part of Bisholim Nafshi. Mamish in the same day, you can be united with the whole Indian of part of Bisholim Nafshi. That the, the whole world follows the, the how do you call it, uh, uh, directives of the Torah, even to the point of the Bnei Yanki carrying out a Din Vamishpat against the city of Shem. And yet, Manalit, Vayavu, Vayovu, Yanki, Sholem, he comes perfect into the city uh, and the city of Shem and the city of Eretz Israel. And like the Medrash tells us that, uh, that all the Goyim did want to make Mokhov. They all got moving and it just didn't happen. So that's also got to do with the fact that the Yudalit Kislev, Shabbos, is Yudalit Kislev. And that's the day that the, the, Rebbe, uh, 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 the Rebbe's Hasna occurred, the year Tophrech paid test in Poland. That's when the, the, the Indian occurred. And so the Rebbe, uh, at that moment, entered into that connection with the Friedrich Rebbe, what he himself said on Yudalit Kislev. Yeah, a long time ago, uh, the Rebbe said that that what made his kesher with all the Hasidim. 
If it hadn't been for that wedding, then there wouldn't have been this whole connection that the Rebbe gained with the Hasidim. And from that moment on, there grew this whole amazing power of Melech HaMashiach. And it's well known when the Rebbe came to America, there were already hints from the Free of the Rebbe that the Mashiach is beginning to appear. Hold on. So what it means is that uh, uh, the Yud Kislev is not just a day where you look back, oh, it's nice, you know, the Rebbe got married, isn't this wonderful, etc., etc. Et it's an important, essential move in the fact that the Rebbe gained his connection through which his leadership as Melech HaMashiach would take over. And therefore, the Rebbe is the perfection of those two in Yonah and part of the First of all, there's a spiritual in him, what the Alter Rebbe brought into the world. He made it all possible. And Esau just looked at the Alter Rebbe and said, wow, how do you know all this? How, how does it all happen? The same like Esau uh, met up with Yankov, you know, he couldn't see himself figure what's going on. All these 400 men all walk off. And he's just, he's left Utrecht. And he told the hint that we're going to meet up with him, Leotic. Well, it comes on Yudkisler, which was years later, and says we can take over the whole world of people. No matter the Maila, the Gilead of Pneumus are told, no matter the Maila. And that's the message, that's the message of the Rabbi in Dukti Shum Sofi, that it can happen and it must happen. Because the way uh, things are running right now, I don't see uh, how it's possible that anything of any benefit they can possibly come out of the whole situation. And the more people you talk to who are aware, the more they'll answer that they agree with you. And everybody sort of doesn't want, know what what can we possibly do. So ain't nothing on What can we as individuals do? All we can do is fit us the king. First of all, learn fit us. Be productive with your fit us. And then talk about what you learn with other people. Whoever you meet, mention about it. And you'll see it works. Built in cold Sophie for Elon to the work. The reason why it doesn't seem to work is that you don't really want to do it. Or you're frightened what sort of effect you're going to have, or you're worried of Khulliver. So the answer is yeah, the Rebbe wasn't worried. The Rebbe said, go ahead and say and talk and do, and you'll see the police shoot something for Elon, that everything will just sweep everything before and the Emes Havaya, the Emes of the Shem Havaya will reveal itself in the world, part of Basholim Nafshi, Mikro, even if they gather around of it, they say, oh, yours, we're going to make war, we're going to do, 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 do. Uh, it says the message, never happened. And uh, every time the Gideon have stood firm, we see that they got places. They never, I mean, the six days, was one of the few times they stood for look what happened the whole thing just fell apart <laughs> they just moved in there so without any worries and it was all these countries all around that they had all these armies and the guns and stuff. so Hashem should offer the base Hashem we should come to the realization that it all goes back to Chitas <laughs> Chitas are the key <laughs> it all goes back and so therefore guys you gotta get cracking you came to the Shiva yeah, you didn't come to the yeshiva just to be like you were in the Balbati Shabbat. You came to the yeshiva to really get involved in Ruchniyas and Elikus and to take that with you back later into the Balbati Shabbat. But if you run around with all the Balbati Shabbat while you're in the yeshiva, then it's like, how do you call it? Like the Gemara says, it's like going to the mikveh and being turned with your holder, an impure thing in your hand. <laughs> it's a toy with the mikveh, but the mikveh doesn't help because you're holding on the whole time to a, a shirt. Yeah. Not as bad as all that, but it's a little bit like an affair. You know, you've got to give uh, patience, and you've got to realize that all the anonymous would look to be, you know, a little bit different. Why do they want this? Why do they want them to go? It's all the unbelievable purpose to give you a new power when you get out of the world. Part of the shalom, the nafshi. But you take a whole new duty to make Sholem in the world, to bring everything in the proper way. And be eager, yeah, you'll be able to talk confidently with people about things. And you'll be able to talk confidently, be eager about Melech HaMashiach. And if they say to you, well, how do you know what you're talking about? You at this point of this compassion, you say, look what happened over here. And, and it's written that the secret is Chetaz. So there we are, guys. Hashem Shalom and Shabbos is you, Dalit. This is such a Hashem Bara Sosim Vesimcha.
Chosim Batal and all the good things. One of our guys is getting caught up, isn't he? Uh, you know, is he going to get caught up in our meeting? I hope. You may have. I don't know. Must be right here. He's going to get caught up here. So you have Mamish Hashem Bar Chosim the Simcha Chosim the Chavu the Kipshutei Mamish and Milt Hashem by all the all the people who need Milt Hashem. He's now a little bit further in life to find the right zibu, and it should all be with unbelievable uh, simcha. I should borrow sosim the simcha. Oh my, can he brought him take the yard?